How is it going, everybody? This is Sean Barnes. I want to welcome you to The Way of the Wolf. On the show today, I'm going to be talking about freedom in a new role. I'm going to be talking through this as if you are a leader and you've brought somebody into your team, whether you inherited them from another business unit or this is a new employee that you've just hired or you've promoted somebody in to more of a leadership role. I think one of the things that comes to mind when I talk through having freedom in a new role is that there are a lot of articles and there's a lot of content out there that talk about how challenging it can be when you are being micromanaged. It can be very frustrating being told what to do every step of the way, every single day. That's tough. That's a challenge. A lot of times managers operate that way. If they are an undeveloped leader, that's all they know is to just dole out tasks and say, Hey, do this, do this, do this. That can be challenging, that can be frustrating, but we're going to talk through everything today on this episode through the lens of a leader that has been developed and knows how to empower the people on their team and allow them to operate in an autonomous way. When you bring in that person onto your team, Sometimes they will struggle transitioning in to a role where they have freedom and autonomy and the opportunity to set their own path and achieve success on their own without being told what to do every step of the way. I've had leaders in my career that did micromanage me and I have had other leaders that just set me free and let me run. I thrive in that latter environment. I love having freedom. I love having the opportunity to solve problems on my own, figure things out, and then work with the team or other teams on moving initiatives forward, getting the business to a better place. But if you bring an employee into your team and they're used to being micromanaged, Maybe they've had a manager for the past five years or 10 or even 20 where that leader or manager just told them what to do every single day. When you flip that switch and give them the opportunity to just do everything on their own, some people can struggle with that. Some people thrive, but others will struggle with that. So let's talk through what we do as leaders when we run into a challenge like that. The first thing you have to do is be aware of the challenge or be aware of the fact that the employee may be struggling. There's a few ways you can do this. You have to be in tune and you have to pay attention to your employees But some things that you can look out for is going to be decreased productivity or output. Maybe you're used to seeing all of the things they could do as an engineer, what that up, that output looked like from them. Now that they're in this new role, you've seen a stark contrast in their ability to move things forward or get projects across the finish line. That's one thing that you want to look out for. Another is if they're constantly seeking for something to do. Hey, do you have anything for me? Hey, do you have anything for me? Hey, do you have anything for me? That's a clue that maybe they're struggling. Maybe they're fumbling a little bit, trying to figure out what does this look like. That probably comes from confidence. Maybe... They understand that they have this great opportunity with all of this freedom now, but don't quite have the confidence to just go out there and steamroll whatever project they have in their path. You know, that goes back to their pre- their previous managers 
telling them what to do every step of the way. They entrusted them to tell them what to do. You can also look for uncertainty in projects or solving problems. If they come to you asking a lot of questions, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? That's okay. You want them to learn. I'm going to circle back around to questions here a little bit later in the show, but that's a good thing. They're seeking feedback. They're seeking guidance from you. And then also if you get, what do you need from me? If you get that question a lot, start thinking through and realizing that it's possible that they're struggling with all of this freedom. So what do we do here? Well, let's start guiding them down a path. Let's start rewiring the way they think and getting them to understand what this looks like being in a role where you have so much autonomy and you're empowering them to accomplish all of the things that they are capable of accomplishing and that it's completely up to them on how far they go. The first thing that I want you to do is have a conversation with them and acknowledge what you're seeing and get a sense of, is this where their head is at? Do they feel similar? If they think that they are crushing it, but you're questioning all of these other things that we just talked about, there's a misalignment there. So you've got to reconcile that. You've got to bring things together, make sure that both of you are on the same page and understand that this is very normal. Again, some people will, will thrive in this environment, but others might take a little bit of guidance before they start thriving. So this is normal. This is acceptable. This is okay. And it's part of the process. As I talk through this, some of these steps are going to feel like micromanagement but there's going to be intentionality behind it. And I think you'll pick up on that as I talk through these. First thing, I want you to have them list out everything that they're working on. All of the projects, all of the reports, all of the designs, everything that they work on, have them start listing all of that out. And then set up some sort of cadence of meetings on regular intervals, probably on a weekly basis might be beneficial at the beginning as you go through this process. It may take two or three meetings a week just to kind of get the ball rolling and start building up some momentum through this process. Once they have everything listed out, you start setting those meetings where you're talking and communicating with one another. Start having them set the deadlines. This is pretty simple to do. If you as a leader know, hey, I've got to get this done by the end of November, you ask the employee, hey, how much time do you need to accomplish this task? And if there's four tasks that need to be done, all of them by the end of November, and they come back and say, well, I'll go ahead and get this first task done by Thanksgiving. That's probably not going to work because that leaves three more tasks that have to get done over a holiday break not very likely to occur. So you can respond back and saying, okay, well, does that give you enough time to handle the other three tasks that have to be done after this? They'll pause, think about it. Well, no, probably not. Okay, maybe I'll get this done by the end of the first week in November. Okay, cool. That works. Now you got to hold them accountable to it and make sure that they do get the task done by that time. But what you've done is set an expectation of them coming up with deadlines and due dates and giving them the opportunity to meet those. Great. Perfect. So you start working through this process on every one of their projects, all of these different tasks, and you start correcting the mistakes that they make. Duh. Okay. That seems obvious. But when I say correcting those mistakes, I want you to start thinking of this more of a path that you're guiding them on. And occasionally, they may step out of line. They may step over this boundary. That's okay. 
as a leader, you just corral them back in. You bring them back in line. Make sure they stay focused on this path. They can do anything they want right here in this realm, but stay focused on this path. So you continue guiding them through this process, giving them the opportunity to set their own deadlines, to complete their own projects. You begin to act in a way of removing roadblocks and that's it. They're going to come to you with questions, questions that you will probably have the answer to. Hopefully you do. I don't want you to give them the answer. I want you to ask them a series of questions that will help lead them to the answer. So as an example, you start, they say, Hey, how do I, how do I close this facility down? Okay. You might have a playbook or a template on how to close a facility down, but ask them, okay, well, what are some things that have to occur? Okay. Well, we've got to move all of the furniture out. Perfect. Let's put that on a list. What else? Well, we're going to have to cut off utilities. Perfect. Put it on a list. What else? We're going to have to relocate the employees in the system to another facility. Awesome. Put on a list. They'll pick up on it pretty darn quick on what needs to occur. At that point, you just say, hey, spend a little bit of time thinking through it. Once you have a complete list together, let's review it. Let's go through it together. Make sure we haven't missed anything. You have to let them find their own way. And you have to be patient. Both parties in this process have to be patient and understand that this process takes time. Some people can flip a switch and just start running. And that's great. That's fantastic. Others, it may take them a few months. Others, it may take a few years. One thing I would caution you on is if you have an employee that you've been working with for years and years and years, at some point, you need to ask yourself, is this really the right role for this person? It might not be. Not everybody is cut out for leadership roles. Some people are destined to be the best engineer in the room. And that's great. But don't try to force a square peg into a round hole. Once you recognize that, hey, this person is best suited to be our lead engineer, put them in that role. They will be happy. You as a leader will be happy. The organization will perform better. That's not always an easy conversation, but that's a topic for another day. Patience is the key here. Recognize and realize that this isn't going to happen overnight. Trust each other in the process and understand that this whole process is a journey. It's going to take time. You have to have trust in one another and you have to be able to work through all of these things together. Open and honest communication is key. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time and y'all have a good one.